So now we'll talk about whitening transformation, which is a quite similar to PCA, but for a different mean. So with whitening transformation, we, we try to, we want to center the data on the origin and remove all covariances to make the variance unitary. So we want to get into an identity matrix as the covariance matrix describing our distribution of the data after the whitening transformation. So if we say that we have some data that is following a D-dimensions, a multivariate normal distribution that characterized by uh, mu and sigma, if we apply a whitening transformation, we will get a Z that is following basically this multivariate uh, distribution centered on the origin of uh, unit variance. So uh, to achieve this, we are looking for some kind of linear transformation. We'll say that Z is equal to uh, sigma power minus 0.5. I will come back to that later on. That is subtle. And uh, so it's basically X minus mu. So minus mu is really centering on the origin. And then this thing is supposed to remove everything in terms of the variance, get us with, a, uh, I would say, an unitary variance setting. And this is kind of related to Malanobis distance, basically. Uh, so uh, we will have something like uh, the, the Malanobis distance is corresponding to that thing. And if we just expand this, it's, it's kind of, uh, this is kind of doubling these things, it's kind of having Z, uh, what's it, you see it's kind of uh, this, as some look of being the squared root of this thing. So it's kind of uh, sketchy what I'm saying here, but uh, it's, it somehow show that there is some links between the Malanobis and what we try to achieve in terms of linear transformation. And, and basically we, we, we can see that the Malanobis distance correspond to the Euclidean distance in a squared in a whitened space. So basically if we apply the whitening transformation and then measure Euclidean distance, it's kind of similar to computing the Malanovis distance uh, according to the, from the, the center to one given point. Now, the big deal is to compute what we call the sigma power minus 0.5, which is not uh, obvious somehow like this. So let's go back with the spectral decomposition. Let's say that we have CDC transpose, which is the spectral decomposition of the covariance matrix. Uh, since C is orthogonal, so we have something like C times C transpose is equal to C transpose C. All this is equal to the identity matrix. So let's say that we have this, we're starting from this. This is our spectral decomposition of the covariance matrix. And then we will multiply every side by CT on the left and C on the right. So we multiply by CT and C here. It means that we have these two things. So we have CTCD, CTCD. And if we look at this here, you know, given that this here correspond to that, which is the identity, this here correspond to that. Again, the identity, we just get rid of them. And as such, we have something like this. We have like CT transpose sigma, the covariance matrix C is equal to big D. We know that covariance of Z is equal to W transpose sigma W in that we want covariance of Z to be diagonal. So we want a diagonal matrix here. So we need to set W to equal a C as we saw before. So now let's, let's decompose the covariance matrix that way. Let's say, okay, we have this covariance matrix, we decompose it that way. So the value is corresponding to the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. So we have all cover, uh, eigenvectors of the covariance matrix as W1 to up to WD. And we have the eigenvalues of the covariance matrix as these things. So basically D is equal to all the eigenvalues corresponding to the eigenvectors here. So we know that the value is orthogonal. So given it is orthogonal, we, we, we can state that the inverse of the value is equal to the transpose of the value. Now we will develop what we call uh, sigma power 0.5.
So basically, it's uh, to see that sigma is described by this. So if we expand this, we know that d is diagonal. So basically, we can say that w is coming, w d w transpose is corresponding to w d power point five d power point five w transpose. So it's kind of decomposing the 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 matrix d, which is made only of the eigenvalues on the diagonal. And if we develop further these things, we just multiply by W transpose W in the middle somehow, we get to something like this. We get to something like W D power 0.5 WT, W D power 0.5 WT again. So we have these two things that are multiplied together. So it's kind of decomposing W uh, sigma in, in the product of these two things all together. And as such, you know, we want to compute the inverse somehow. So we want to compute the sigma power minus 0.5. Uh, you know, mathematically speaking, it's not totally correct. It's a shortcut we are taking here. There's no such thing as a sigma power minus 0.5, as far as I know. But uh, it's a way to illustrate or to make the decomposition here, which is analogous to what we would do in one dimensions, for example. So uh, let's use this. So we were looking to get the inverse of that matrix, but uh, directly it's correspond to changing, like just using D instead of D power 0.5 is D power minus 0.5. The rest is unchanged. And as such, this, this matrix D powers, power minus 0.5 is corresponding to in fact, getting all values on that diagonal to the power of minus 0.5. So one over square root of lambda one, one over square root of lambda, lambda two, and so on up to lambda d. Okay, so we have done most of it here. So here's the summary for doing a, a, a widening transformation. Basically, we say we have some data following some uh, uh, normal distribution in d dimensions and uh, with uh, a mu and a sigma as parameters of that. We want to transform it to get into some unitary uh, covariance with uh, center on the origin. So it means to do this uh, and we get the w as the eigenvectors of our covariance matrix. And we have the matrix d power minus 0.5 equal to that, which is based on again values but manipulated in some ways and with that we are achieving a z that is following a normal distribution of zero mean uh, identity covariance so to illustrate this you know the difference with what we had before with the uh, the pca is to center all this on the origin here and, and in fact, you see that we are we have this this would say variance in that direction. So by uh, using the d power minus 0.5, we are kind of normalizing somehow the the I would say the uh, the variance in that direction. So we've got a variance that is unitary here. So basically, we have now a ball unitary ball around the origin for describing our data here. So some illustration of the whitening transformation here. So let's assume that we have these two data sets that are intertwined. So we have, these are the half moon. So it's not really a normal distribution, normally distributed data set, but still you can apply it here. What we see is that we will reshape it somehow. We are, we are centered now on the origin and uh, we'll say the spread here correspond more or less to uh, unit standard deviation on both directions. And there is like, seems to be quite well center and, and, and the covariance should be probably zero here because we are uh, whitened. 